Be sure to stick around to the end of the video for my review of the Galmon PD2200 graphic display tablet. In the 5e game that I'm in, the one with Sains, Bulbagoth, and Sal, we also have a warlock in our party. I drew him in the last video, but to be honest he wasn't in the story, so instead I'm going to make this video all about him. Warlocks are one of my favorite classes, and I think they're very cool, they're very fun, but they also have a lot of balance issues. Wizards of the Coast's solution to this is not a very good one in my opinion because it only just makes the balance issues that much worse. Their idea is if a class is weak, you need to give it a good subclass, which kind of invalidates the other subclasses. And this is the problem I have with the Hexblade. Edgar is a Hexblade. Not that I have a problem with him. I just kind of wish that Wizards would be willing to actually adjust some of their classes in base form instead of via subclasses, but anyway. Edgar Pritchard is a human noble, young, bright-eyed, and bushy-tailed, lawful good, and to be totally honest, a bit of a weakling. That was until he came into contact with a magical, potentially cursed sword that promised to make him a martial master. The soul and the weapon granted him mysterious powers, as he set out trying to make a name for himself, and tried to make his father proud. When he wound up joining our group, we brought him along because he insisted on helping us for no pay, and he was part of the guard in the local town. He was happy to work for exposure, which is probably the most unrealistic aspect about this entire game. Anyway, Edgar's player is a little bit of a min-maxer. But I don't really feel that min-maxing and optimizing a character is necessarily a bad thing, as long as it doesn't interfere with character ideas and roleplay. To be honest, everybody in the group, to some degree, min-maxes a bit, and they're smart about how they build their characters. Everybody in the party is very capable at this game. This does mean that at 4th level, Edgar did decide to take Polearm Master as his 4th level feat namely because Variant Human was not allowed in this game, but this enabled him to attack as a bonus action with his Halberd, granting him three attacks per round. And if you're wondering, at level 8 he did take Sentinel, yes, or as I like to call it, the Bastard combo. Anyway, Polar Master isn't really too relevant to this entire thing, but Hexblades can be a bit scary, and it's really not hard for them to do so at base, so when you start taking things like this, they just get that much more broken. Now, a little bit about Warlocks for those who don't know. They have the unique trait of recovering spell slots with just a short rest, to offset the fact that they only get like two, maybe three at later levels. This means that as long as your party is taking expected short rests, you can constantly be ready to go at max power, because all your spell slots are going to be at the max level you can cast. On the flip side, if your party never takes short rests, you're basically just a glorified cantrip user and it really sucks and this was my experience playing Warlock so far and it kinda sucks because the thematically the Warlock is my favorite class and I don't like it. But anyway, that's not here nor there. One trait of the Hexblades is called Hexblades Curse, a once per short rest ability, just like their spell slots. You target a creature as a bonus action, and you get to add your proficiency bonus to damage rolls against them, which is actually a rare trait and does not many class abilities scale with proficiency as opposed to class level or something like that. It also makes it so that a warlock can crit on a 19 as well as a 20. That last bit in particular is very important. As you can imagine, with Polar Master combined, he has gotten a lot of crits in the game. Now, couple this with Eldritch Smite. Eldritch Smite essentially emulates the Paladin's Divine Smite feature. When you hit a target, you can spend a spell slot to deal 1d8 points of damage to them, plus an additional 1d8 per level of the spell slot. This means a level 1 spell slot will do 2d8 of damage, and so on. I think you all can probably figure out where this is going if you have any idea about how 5e works at all. A little bit of a story here. In our sessions, we were investigating bandit attacks on iron shipments into the town, Smithy's Anvil. We also had to deal with being marked by a group of assassins who were occasionally attacking us. One night, after investigating, we decided to head back to the tavern and lay down to rest. Two assassins wound up showing up to try and attack us. Luckily, since my character was an elf, she was awake at this time, and she was able to intercept them as they were coming in. We managed to get a jump on them and try to stop their attempt. When they started fleeing, Edgar rushed after them and was able to catch up to one. He uses his bonus action to activate his Hexblade's curse on the target and then attacks twice. The second hit crits, thanks to his curse. Naturally, he smites. So let's run some numbers really quick. The Halberd's a plus one Halberd thanks to an invocation that he has. He has a plus four to Charisma and Hexblades can use their Charisma modifier for their Pact Weapon. We're level 6, so his proficiency bonus is plus 3, and his spell slot level is 3, so Eldritch Smite adds 48 of damage. Now, when you crit in 5e, all the damage die wind up getting doubled. So that's an extra 1d10 and 48. This means that he dealt, in one attack, 
2d10 plus 8d8 plus 8 damage, or an average of 52. I don't remember specifically what he rolled, but I know that it was around 50. Needless to say, this was far more than what this lowly assassin had in HP, so he exploded, <laughs> coating the entire walls with blood and his guts. And that's not all. In his place now stood a specter, under Edgar's command. Edgar didn't really expect all this to happen. I mean, his player did, but Edgar's a very naive and idealistic young man. The entire party, including Edgar, was now a little bit nervous about how dangerous he actually was. He played charades a little bit with the specter to find out who hired him to kill us and then dismissed it. Turns out that our contact at the church was double-crossing us, so we decided to skip town for a little bit. Later, we eventually helped guard a convoy on the way to town in hopes of intercepting the bandits that we were after. We were able to detect their trap before they attacked, and then they sprung. Our entire party moved and was easily able to overpower them, especially Edgar, who happened to get another crit. And once again, the bandit popped like a zit, and left behind a ghost. The remaining bandits fled, using some stolen magic items to teleport away, while the merchants we were protecting looked at us in horror, and insisted on upon going the rest of the way by themselves. I don't really blame them. Hexblades are kind of scary. Thank you all for watching the video. As usual, thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. I've also got some new merch in my store, which if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. Before I wrap up here, I have a review of the Gaumon PD2200 graphics tablet. And let's try to do this in 30 seconds. Go. The Gaumon PD2200 is a 22-inch graphics tablet by Gaumon running at about $400. This cost is undercut a bit by the rough screen textures and a slightly poorer color quality with an odd refresh rate that felt like it was leaving trails behind at times. Still, the pen is a battery-free pen which is excellent and has tilt support, and the calibration software for the drivers is actually really solid leaving to a very low parallax. Also in my opinion, Gaumon has the absolute best tablet stands. If you're willing to take on a few screen issues in exchange for getting a very big tablet at a very cheap cost, then this might be a worthwhile trade.